You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to episode 31 of the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're talking about... Uh, Lazy WWE writing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good. It's fair. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, and it wasn't even the show that was half of one one segment. Or half of the show was one segment. Well... That's not the lazy part. SmackDown is two hours long. It's true. They had one match that was, what, about an hour? It was over an hour. 15 minutes? 10 minutes? Uh, Probably an hour hour five all right and then raw had a segment that lasted 41 minutes oh you timed it out no somebody else did oh yeah that makes sense so uh yeah fill in time it's true fill in time um the go home to the elimination chamber not too much happened this week Mm -mm. actually did have a title change on raw that yeah that did that did happen um all right so last week I didn't watch the third hour, and I caught it on Hulu, Mm -hmm. and last week's third hour was very good. Yeah. And I thought this week's third hour was good, too. That's It's better than usual. Now, here's the problem. The first two hours are crap. Everybody's turning it off. You have the lowest third hours, and that's your reason why. Because I think in the past, their format was open strong and then kind of fade out. Kind of, and then at ten o'clock you do something somewhat strong, and then after that it's all fi- uh, throw in, throwaway stuff, and mm. then the main event. Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest, it's been quite some time when since we've had a main event that's actually meant something. Well, this week it wasn't a match. Last week it was Braun and Angle versus yeah. Corbin and McIntyre. Which we got again, again this week, except yes. for... and that was the 41-minute segment. Yeah, except for more people in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then before that, it probably wasn't... It was Seth Rollins getting F5'd six times. Mm-hmm. So, you know, obviously Raw's it's main events uh, aren't... No. ...that important no. nowadays. No, which is probably why we saw that huge drop in the third hour for most weeks. Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, apparently the Revival and Rude and Gable have been having incredible matches on the house show circuit recently. Well, I know their match on like, Monday was very good. Oh, yeah, no, it was fantastic. Yeah. It was like, uh, what was it, 30 minutes probably? It was It was long. Yeah. I was surprised. Um, but, Again, I mean, they I was were surprised that they won, so. No, and, I mean, after everything we heard, it kind of. Makes sense. No, it just... They're pandering to them because yeah, they don't want it, them to leave. It makes everything a little less exciting. Well, it's true because it's they, like, they didn't oh. earn it. Or I shouldn't say they didn't earn it. It wasn't the WWE giving something they felt that they deserved. They are right. like, shut up. Take this. <laughs> Take this. Take my money. Yeah. But I think they would they give them uh, X amount of time to rebuild the tag division or something like that. Oh. I think the WWE told to the revival when they wanted to leave. Oh, oh, they said, oh! Here, we're gonna we're gonna fix everything. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, well, it's not that hard. It's not. It's not that the talent's not there. It's just well, that's, the way that they book them. That's the thing, and I mean, you know, a big part of it is their number one company. They don't have any real direct competition at this point. Right now, right yeah. now, it's going to happen. Uh, Double or nothing sold out within I think four minutes yes, today. It's true. Um, but you know what I really liked about this tag title match, and uh, Impact had a tag title match as well on Friday, and it Nobody was just saw it though. Well, it's just like <laughs> seven thousand people were watching on Twitch. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> But that's hilarious. Like there were so many times in the match where finishers were kicked out of, mm-hmm. and this match, one finisher ended it. Yeah, that's and true. that, I don't know. I feel like that's a lost art in wrestling now. Mm-hmm. It's all about, you know, how many finishers can you kick out of and things like that. It's true. And yeah, this match was a lot of the revival kind of trying to cheat to win, mm-hmm. but just barely uh, missing out. And then eventually, out of seemingly nowhere, when it looked like they were down down and out at the time. Oh, I knew as soon as he was going into the corner, a shadow machine was coming up <laughs> next. It, they they planned it out. But it was just, they did it where you didn't need big spots for the match to continue and get everybody That's into true. it. Yeah. A lot of roll-ups and things like that. Mm. But, you know, Rude and Gable, again, they've been very good, too. Yeah. And well, Gable is probably one of the better wrestlers in the company. That's true. So that doesn't hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, but... 
you know, the the two of them working together is very good though. Yeah. So I wonder if they're gonna keep them together, because like going back and forth. Or you mean no, Rude just, and Gable? You're talking yeah, about? Yeah. Okay, I thought you meant the two teams. No, um, because right now Rude kind of hasn't done anything as a singles wrestler anyway. No, but I mean, you gotta think he's also probably forty. He older. probably wants a lighter. Yeah, that, and it seems like they're afraid to let Gable flourish on his own. Yeah. Which is makes no sense, because mm-hmm. out of the two of them, he's the better wrestler well, and the better talker. When he came over to Raw, what did he have, two matches with Jinder, and then he was uh, with Bobby Roode pretty much, it yeah, felt like? Yeah, more or less, yeah. Um, so, But can, it's all from where we go from here, mm-hmm. because... Well, yeah, you can have one night where everything's yeah, good. Yeah, it works good, yeah. Uh, but hopefully they do do something big. And you um, got to remember that the SmackDown tag division has Shane and The Miz as champions. Oh so. boy, Mick Miz TV. Oh that God. was uh, that was something. <sighs> yeah, Whatever. yeah. So we had uh, two women tag team triple threat matches on mm-hmm. both shows. The people who got pinned were the ones who enter first in the elimination chamber mm-hmm. match. Uh, Sasha and Bailey ended up. Well, Bailey got pinned on mm-hmm. Raw. Sasha was taken out of a match once again. Yeah, it um, seemed like she might have been hurt still. So, but she got beat up quite a bit in the match. Yeah, it seems. I was reading conflicting reports that some people said she was out. Mm-hmm. Some people said she was cleared to go in. So mm-hmm. I guess we'll see on Sunday. I guess. I, guess, but I mean, she... they are probably one of the heavily favorite mm-hmm. teams to win. Absolutely. So, well, they're the team that makes the most sense. It's true. Well, eh, kind I mean, of. you have other, you know, teams that have been teams, you yeah. know. Well, considering that Becky and Charlotte have gotten so much of the spotlight lately, I, kind of, I think that they kind of should get it. It's true. Because, you know, it's not like Becky and Charlotte are necessarily more talented. Mm-hmm. It's just they, they're they on a show where their focus is on the women's division. Yeah. Not on Ronda. Mm-hmm. And, and it'll, whoever Ronda is facing. Well, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how they book it because there's only one set of titles for mm-hmm. two shows yeah, and if that, they're gonna have multiple feuds going on at once if there's just one you know I, li- I like the fact that they did that though because it well a we don't know what they're gonna do so it could be interesting what they do right and the idea of having it so that they can defend it on either show is cool although it seems and this completely goes against what they were saying um, when SmackDown goes over to Fox, mm-hmm. is that um, oh they want to keep everything separate? Yeah, right? and it yeah. seems like they're trying to blend everything together now. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the opposite of. I mean, that's the thing though. And we've been talking about is there's not going to be a flip of the light switch, and all of a sudden everything's going to be magically better. No, oh, no, absolutely not. Because it just seems like they've shown where they've given opportunity to correct things, and they chose not to. No. Um, um, it looks like we're definitely getting a um, uh, another shakeup too. Right? Yeah, they announced it. I think in Canada, right? Yeah, the Post same WrestleMania, the same Raw that they always do it at. So, so it's really not that big of a surprise. The week after the Raw after, after WrestleMania, WrestleMania yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, we had that match on SmackDown as well, mm-hmm. um, and Mandy took the pin. Yes, from Naomi. And uh, it's funny because the Iconics didn't get into the match at all. Well, they played it smart. They did. They did. That is true. They and then did. they took advantage and beat up Naomi and uh, Carmella after the match. Yes. So they were doing what a heel team should be doing. That's true. Cowering and then fighting when uh, you got the advantage. I guess that, yeah, that's a good point. Um, but it's just funny because they're obviously the weakest team in the whole thing. So Yeah, but... And they have been pushing for them to win the whole Yeah, and you always <laughs> see them staring at the titles before. Because we saw that same triple threat on SmackDown the week before. Mm-hmm. Granted, there was no uh, Stipulation. stipulations last week. Which, you know, that did add to the show. Uh, we did have stipulations in both of these matches. Well, yeah. On both. I mean, even if it's not much. I mean, granted, a big part of the Elimination Chamber, at least for me, was you get to see who comes out first and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I guess they just kind of wanted to... Uh, Make it so the matches just didn't happen for no reason. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, I know what you mean now. But, and uh, we had a gauntlet match on SmackDown for over an hour. All six members. Uh, Mustafa Ali was removed. removed and replaced by Kofi Kingston. Mm-hmm. And he had a fantastic showing on SmackDown. He did. He, uh, I was very surprised, which I'm sure you were as well. Oh, yeah. 
I thought for sure he was going to get eliminated by yep. Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Because they went, they went about 25 minutes, mm-hmm. maybe even a little more. Um, it, what was it? Big E and Xavier. They both got kicked out of the match. Yep. And Rowan was still allowed at ringside at the time. Which is funny because they attacked Rowan after Rowan, at, um, I guess, pulled Kofi down. Right. And then that's when the ref kicked him out because they were trying to help Kofi. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then Rowan launches Kofi over the barricade into like the timekeeper's area, and the ref's like, "How did he get over there?" <laughs> These two things don't add up. Yeah, so he kicks out Rowan. Yep. And then the match goes even a little yeah. bit longer. It went for a little while. Yeah. And then eventually, uh, Kofi hits Trouble in Paradise mm-hmm. and uh, pins Daniel Bryan, yep. and I was very surprised. Yeah. Yeah, he beats the uh, champ. Mm-hmm. So that was that. Was that. Yeah. Then he beats Hardy with the SOS. Yeah. Slightly less surprising. And then we saw, and then he faced Joe next. Mm-hmm. And similar to what had happened against AJ Styles when Joe had AJ in the Coquina clutch, AJ yeah. flipped over and AJ was tapping out at that time. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But this way, uh, Kofi picked up the victory over Joe. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, Joe beats him up outside the ring. Yeah. And that puts him in the clutch again. Yeah. When we get AJ and Kofi, Kofi eventually taps out to the calf crusher. Yeah, well, Kofi, uh, AJ didn't want Kofi to be in the match. Oh, right, right. He's like, you don't need to do this. Yeah, you, so we can stop if you want. Kofi's like, I, I got this. I've been like, here this for my shot. 11 years or whatever, however long he said. Yeah. This is my shot. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, like you Although said. Although it's not his first championship opportunity. No, no. I think he was the right man to put in this situation. Yeah, it's fair. Um, everyone, like, says that Big E has, like, the most potential. But I think Kofi is uh, underrated, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I think all three of them fair. are technically Oh, absolutely. Um, what was it last time they did a gauntlet match? Big E was in it. The last time a member of the New Day was put into a singles match, it was Kofi, I think. Yeah. I don't remember. No, no, no. I thought it was... I'm almost positive the last time it was... The gauntlet? They did another gauntlet I was talking about. It was a gauntlet? Yeah. I uh, could have sworn. Uh, the main we were talking about two different things, but I'm almost positive the last time because it was when Samoa Joe almost killed Daniel Bryan. Maybe. Yeah, I could have sworn. It's anyway. hard to remember. Uh, but so I, much going on. I know that in the past, Kofi has been picked as the one. Oh no, it was the Money in the Bank match. Oh, they did a gauntlet beforehand, didn't they? Maybe. Like, I know yeah. that he was the one who ended up being in the match, mm. though. Okay. He was the member of the New Day that made it. Gotcha. Or that went in. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, we so, assumed it was going to be Big E, but it wasn't. Right. So it was like nine fifty nine at this point, and uh, we're like, "All right, come on, Orton, you're coming out. You're gonna hit AJ with an RKO, and mm-hmm. that's gonna be the show." Yeah. And they didn't disappoint. I figured he wasn't even gonna bother hitting the music. He was gonna be just run out. Yeah. Because AJ was staring at the ramp. I figured he was gonna turn around and then get RKO'd, and then they ended it. But nope. They hit the music, and pretty much the same thing. Eventually, after, like, forever. <laughs> it felt like forever. Well, that's because we were all probably looking at the clock, and it was 9.59. Yeah. Orton finally hits the RKO. He yep. pins him. The SmackDown logo comes up, and that's it. Mm-hmm. They timed it well. Yeah. Um, so Orton is going to be entering the chamber last. Yes. Um, so last week, we had a bunch of these guys in singles matches. This week, we have the gauntlet match, and then all of them in the elimination chamber on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So... I mean, I thought it was going to be too much. Like, but, no, it but they, did, they did it fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought it was good. Yeah. I well, mean, when next month, if it happens again, then we'll probably say Oh, yeah, different. yeah. Because what are the other five competitors going to have and uh, add maybe Mustafa in if he's better? Yeah. And have a six-pack challenge at Fastlane for the number one contendership for Mania versus yeah. you know whoever. What, you know what's funny? Hmm. Like, my biggest biggest question into going into figuring out who's going to win the elimination chamber mm-hmm. match is who's going to have the most logical wrestlemania match and it's, i got uh, nothing nothing yeah not a thing i know <laughs> so no but this um, is really nothing that makes any sense yeah. kofi wrestles like close to an hour and uh randy orton wrestles 30 seconds, seconds. <laughs> Between well, thirty seconds between him running oh, into the ring, the ring and celebrating. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, but that was uh, and that was pretty much SmackDown. I mean, yeah, minus McMiz TV. Yeah, in the beginning, but oh, yeah. we'll get to that with Raw. Yeah. So, um, 
What else do we have? Uh, Dean versus EC3 in a rematch from last week. This time, Dean goes over. In the so, same fashion, I believe. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Uh, um, before that, we should mention that, uh, what was it? Seth Rollins came out mm. addressing the uh, situation at WrestleMania. Said yep. that he's not afraid of Brock Lesnar. Paul Heyman comes out, and he pretends like he's going to uh, bring out Lesnar. Which we all know unless there's not. Yeah, there. exactly. They don't if he's if he's not announced, he's not there. Um, so Paul says that he's not gonna be able to beat Brock, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I don't remember how that segment ends. It was just um, just Rollins saying that he's not afraid. Yeah, I think so. And then at that point Dean's music plays mm-hmm. and we're like, Oh god, here we go. Yeah. And then Dean comes out and he's just Tells him to slay the beast and leaves. And apparently, I guess that wasn't quote unquote scripted. Well, it was supposed to be something else along yeah, with that. Yeah, was supposed to be talking shield nonsense or something like that. Because mm-hmm. um, I guess they wanted to make Dean seem, I don't know, face ish. Maybe. Yeah. Because the heel turn obviously didn't work out the way yeah. they wanted. But the funny thing is, I think what he did was better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it was, was short to the point, right. made sense for his character. And it didn't jeopardize his alignment mm-hmm. because, you know, there's a difference between someone being a bad guy and somebody being loyal. Yeah, it's true. So, because it's not like Dean didn't realize what he was doing was wrong. Right, right, right. he turned right. on Rollins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, all of a sudden he knows that his friend is, you know, up in a situation that he needs support and he gave it to him. So. Yep. But, yeah. That was that. Um... Like we had mentioned, the six-man tag that took place again this week mm-hmm. after it took place last week. Yeah, because it event. started as Finn versus Drew, right? Yeah, and they gave that match time, too. Yeah, that was, was going for a little. Minutes, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then uh, Lashley got involved, and then everybody ended up beating each other up, mm-hmm. and then Angle came out, and Braun, and everything like that. Six-man yeah. tag, like mm-hmm. we said. And Finn Finn ends up beating Lashley. Yes. Coup de gras. Mm -hmm. And then earlier in the evening, it was announced that Finn will be taking on Lashley and... Rush. Leo Rush in a handicap match at Elimination Chamber for the IC title. Or maybe they... Well, when they made the announcement, he wasn't. Right. And then they showed a graphic that it was. Or I should say they said it wasn't, but then they showed a graphic that it was. Or -hmm. or vice versa, one or the other. Um, I know that... Um, I guess we'll talk about... I figure we talk about the biggest thing at the end. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, because all I was going to say is that Finn had a backstage segment where he said that he was going to beat Lashley and take his title. Right. Okay. I Who gotcha. he was talking to, I guess we'll refer to yes. later. But Well, it's not really a secret. No, but, but either way. They did something that I'm glad they finally did. Keeping Becky throughout the show oh, and then oh, her leaving. Of, yeah, instead of her opening the show and then leaving. Yeah. Although, yeah. technically speaking, that makes the most sense. It does. Because she's not a part of that show. She's not going to I, wrestle. I know, but if you're making her out to be, you know, a draw and all these other things, just, I mean, honestly, when was times where somebody was supposed to be a draw and all of a sudden they'd leave, beside Lesnar? Roman did it a few times. I guess so. Seth's done it. All right, fine. it's not unheard of. I it's not, but yeah. it just felt like I understand this was what the right. you mean. But yeah. if you have a SmackDown superstar taking over most of Raw's no, 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 time, no, that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. very bad looking. No, no, that's true. And then, <laughs> yeah, all right. So I guess I guess we can talk about it because we can talk about this women's match that took place with amongst everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's relatively um, inconsequential in the match. But. It is, but it isn't at the same time. So we'll get into it. Okay. All right. So Triple H and Stephanie come out. They obviously want Becky to apologize for everything that happened. Yeah, because she's a bully. Yes. You know, this goes on. They basically say by the end of the night, we want an apology or else. What, are they going to just strip her from the match? Yeah, they just said she won't get her match. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So we we get little bits and pieces of her throughout the night. Like you had mentioned, her backstage with Finn kind of just uh, talking with other roster members giving her advice on what to do she talked to finn she Mm -hmm. talked to alexa and she talked to she was with ronda too ronda yeah ronda told her that like if you don't if you don't apologize Mm -hmm. that just shows that you're afraid to fight me this is putting the whole woman's evolution into jeopardy because then we won't main event the show and Mm -hmm. everything like that 
And all right, so there was another women's match that took place. It was Nikki Cross versus Ruby Riot. Mm-hmm. And Ruby Riot is challenging Ronda for the title on Sunday. Yeah. And they just kind of completely shit on her and said, you're not going to win the title. We're not even going to mention it. You know, it could be you could be facing Ruby Riot at WrestleMania. You're going to be facing Ronda Rousey. I guess I I don't see it that way. Just because, as it's the, the way that the WWE operates, is that they talk about the future in the present tense. I guess that's true. Because it's always okay. This is what you're gonna do. They did the same thing last year with um, Nakamura versus AJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah AJ yeah. had to defend his title at Fastlane. Right. But then they constantly said, "Oh, I, maybe they'll he won't face him after all." And I know, like but that. here in, it's just been in straight. To well, the Ruby point. said that she was going to be the next champion. Yeah, Ruby did, but everybody else didn't even acknowledge that Ruby was in a match. I know, but I, I, I don't think that that's what their aim was. Obviously, she's. Oh no, I win. didn't say that was their intention, oh, but that's just, just the way it came off, gotcha. and it was like. Yeah, because it's. I mean, honestly, what I would do is have Ruby win the title on Sunday, and then have her lose it at Fastlane, or have her win it and then lose it on Monday. Yeah, exactly. Have Just the to riot throw squad. everything. Yeah, have the riot squad interfere, and then make Monday's match a uh, like no one on ringside. Right. Yeah. Thing. Exactly. Something like that. Yeah. Because that would just throw everybody, and you know that would make things interesting at least. It's true. But they don't do any. You're not gonna have. Um, you're not gonna have Ronda Rousey's first loss. She's already lost hands. in that tag match. First one-on-one <laughs> pinfall loss. There'll be interference against. What well, doesn't matter. Yeah, <sighs> if if she loses the title, it has to be a um, a pinfall loss. Though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter if it's clean. No, I know. Um, but that can just be another one of their excuses. I guess. I don't know. It's not gonna happen. I don't know. I'm just saying it should. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, all right, I'll let you go on with it. No, we're at the end now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, so basically, (laughs) um, at the end of the show, it's the main event, I guess, um, Becky comes out and so does Triple H and Stephanie and she goes, I don't want to apologize. I'm proud, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then eventually she reluctantly apologizes because... She only did what she oh she thought it was a trick because she said several times that she doesn't trust either right. of them, mm-hmm. um, and she said the only reason why she didn't want to get checked was because she thought she'd lose her shot again. Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. Um, so eventually she apologizes. They shake hands. Uh, Triple H says he's proud of her, which is a little weird. Mm. Um, and then they go to leave, and then Vince comes out and says, "Well, well, I'm not so easily." Uh, I guess impressed or right, whatever, right, something like that. Um, and then he's like, "Becky, you're suspended for sixty days, which is six days long." Because he did something, something like, like that. that yeah, yeah. He, it took him a second. Six days past this year's WrestleMania, so he has a replacement, somebody who stays in her lane, who has charisma and oh something like God. that, prestige and all yeah. this other stuff, and then legacy. Like, and then he's like, "Charlotte," I'm like, "You're on Raw." Pick a raw person. <laughs> it's Dana Brooke, <laughs> which they cut. Apparently, I guess Dana Brooke and uh, Natalia were supposed to have a match. She challenged her last week. So that's gonna be on the pre-show. Is, is that how it works? Could. I think. I think that was what our theory was the last Probably. time when they yeah, cut yeah. Carmella versus or Naomi versus yeah. Mandy Rose. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but you know, yeah, and the internet had a meltdown, as they always but do. It, but this was the right decision. Yeah, that's the funny. This part. is the whole. It's wrestling. This, this is. This is the best way <laughs> to get Charlotte into that match that didn't feel stupid. Right, and you're just giving Becky even more, more stuff, stuff to do. Because <laughs> exactly. like, I just didn't get it. At I, the beginning of the show, I texted you, this overexposure is going to ruin the whole thing. Yep, and I agreed with you, and I said, yep, because we're just going to get this for another two months yes. almost. But what they did was, in having her suspended... This way, that gives her the opportunity to cause trouble. She's gonna show up when she's not supposed to. Screw yeah. up matches, uh-huh. things like that. So th- this this like prolonged her story for the yeah. two months in between exactly. here and that, yeah. and it made it so that finally on the Raw or SmackDown right before WrestleMania, that's when they're gonna finally put her back in the match. And you have a legitimate heel in the match it's true because now ronda won't get booed out of the building Mm -hmm. and things like that 
I want a McMahon in every corner. Man. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I did suggest that, didn't I? Well, you did. <laughs> so it's going to be uh, Vince in Charlotte's corner, um, Triple H in Ronda's corner, because Stephanie is afraid mm-hmm. of Ronda. Right. And Becky and Ronda's, because they and teased even that. Sh- Stephanie and uh, because Becky's let- corner. Last Monday, they said uh, that uh, it seemed like Stephanie wanted to be on Becky's side. Mm. So that's what's going to happen. As long as this... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So. Uh, yeah. No, I, I I really enjoyed the ending of Raw. And I know a lot of people were mad. Be like, oh, they're not giving us what we want. And I was like... And they are. Why don't you finish? Just this, The whole point is the story. Yeah. This is the whole build. They're jumping the gun. Yeah. like They, they wh- literally gave us... They gave us what we expected and were okay with, and they did it in a way that made sense. Yeah, and honestly, which is more than they deliver most of the time. Their triple threat matches are always good. Mm-hmm. The, when the WWE usually puts them together, yeah, and, uh, we had Oscar, Charlotte, and Becky. That was fantastic. Yeah, this, uh, going back a couple years of WrestleMania when you had um, Becky, Charlotte, and so, Sasha. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was those three, right? Yeah. That was when Charlotte won the official women's that title. That was for the when they got rid of the Divas yep. Championship, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I, I, I think this was the right decision. Yep. You know, people can disagree, but hey, I like it. They're oh, wrong. we we did forget to talk about Elias and the Lucha House Party. Yes, that's a thing. Now, I I thought I liked the segment. It was funny. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Kalisto can play the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that did not make Elias happy. No. Um, Elias got cut off like four times, I think. Yeah, yeah, they that. went backstage and a couple other things. And that was another thing they did. I think during the Nikki Cross and Ruby match is when they cut backstage to Ronda and yeah, that's, Becky. That's it was during that. that. And yeah. that's why another thing, the reason I thought, yeah. which Ruby ended up going over. But And that was a really good match, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for um, what it was. That's true. Well, it's a, a match that's not necessarily supposed to get showcased. No, but I mean, you know, you're trying to make Ruby a legitimate contender. And well, you don't want Nikki. a clown I, I know it's someone who's supposed to be the baddest woman on the planet. It, it's, it's tough to build somebody up and yeah, when you're using like a regular roster member to do it. That's true. Which I think that's still a big part was using utilizing, uh, you know, enhancement talent and stuff like that. But and how people used to look better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But now their roster is so filled with people that somebody, you know, people have to lose. That's sure. just the way it is. Mm-hmm. Um, That's why they have the club. <laughs> it's sad, but it's true. Uh, yeah. Um, well, granted, when they're on TV. Yeah. Well, but, uh, yeah, thing. Elias ended up hitting Kalisto with a guitar, and I think Kalisto is... Uh, Dead? No longer with us. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, he killed him. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Well, I think... So last it's gonna be a week, three on one match on one day. Well, last week, Jarrett, when he hit him with the guitar, like the guitar barely broke. Well, it was only like the face of yeah. the guitar broke, and then it was so like, he must have hit him wrong. <sighs> yeah, so, I don't know. And the same thing happened this week. He's but taking his frustration out on Kalisto. Kalisto is half the size of Elias, it's literally. True. Um, but. And then, moving from the Raw main event to the SmackDown opening. Uh, Charlotte yeah. comes out and she's like, "Oh, obviously I should be the one replacing Becky." Blah blah blah. I'm the best. Well, it's funny. Before Be- uh, Charlotte came out, they just played a video of mm-hmm. what had happened on Raw, and the crowd was just booming, completely booming. But you yeah. need that big heel. Yeah, it's it, it's That's just true. part of the story. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing sometimes wrong with sometimes what they did. WWE can get it right. It's true. I mean, not obviously, often. it's n- we're not. Out of the woods yet, no. because there's still plenty of room for them to screw it when up. When you get one of ten storylines correct, that's really not that <laughs> impressive. No. Because, you know, if a monkey using a typewriter, eventually he's going to write something <laughs> that makes sense. Who's writing this crap? So. But, yeah, no, go on. Uh, that was it. Nah, you know, she's yeah. talking about how she, she is the right person to replace Becky. Right. Everybody booed, and she didn't care. Yeah. Everybody booed, she wooed. Yeah. That was that, and yeah. that was uh, pretty much this week's wrestling in a nutshell. Yeah, l- m- minus Make a Miz TV, but yeah, that was inconsequential. Terrible. Yeah. I hope the Usos win. <laughs> it's definitely possible. Uh, so um, that's uh, pretty much all we have here. We will be back next time for our Elimination Chamber predictions video. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Yeah, if you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.